We're on a journey to the four corners of the globe. We're looking at cutting edge science and technology, which has the potential to revolutionize our businesses, our economies, and our lives in the decades ahead. I'm going in search of answers to the mysteries of our mind, asking, can brain power really restore movement where it was thought lost forever? So welcome to Horizons. Here at the University of Miami, scientists are working on a device which gives them a much better understanding of what's going on inside the brain. It's enabling people to learn new skills and giving people with paralysis movement they thought they lost forever. And after a spinal cord injury several years ago, that's something Felton Brown is hoping for. He was paralysed during a game of high school football, but now he's working with the paralysis unit at the University of Miami in Florida to see if movement to his hands can be restored. So how long have you been paralysed for? 15 years. Uh, so it's a long time. Yeah, half my life. Felton has a spinal cord injury, and so his muscles are paralyzed in his hands. And so what we're going to do with him is he is going to think about opening or closing his hand, which normally does not result in any movement of his muscles. However, we're going to send those signals from his brain to our computer. The computer will figure out what he's thinking and then send the signals to his muscles and move them. So we will attach the electrodes, you'll see. Um, but this goes around his head uh, like this. Felton, is there a sensation at all? Can you sense it monitoring you, or is it just you just feel something strapped to your head? No, no, I, I just feel something um, strapped to my head. The equipment being used here for neuro rehabilitation is a further incarnation of the electroencephalogram, or EEG. It records the messages brain cells send to each other, and those messages are picked up as small electrical impulses on the scalp. Chris Berker from the California-based company Advanced Brain Monitoring is a leading developer of EEGs, which are already widely used to monitor a variety of brain conditions such as epilepsy, strokes, dementia and Parkinson's disease. I mean, I think a lot of people have seen this sort of stuff before. They've seen the stuff on your head, they've seen the brain waves. But that's not what's novel, is it? It's, it's understanding, it's the maths behind that, which is really new here. In spinal cord injury, the muscles are fine, the brain is fine, the intention to move is there, uh, but, the, but the connection is broken. And uh, essentially what we're doing is mapping the brain's electrical activity. So every time that you think, I'm going to move my hand, there's, there's a particular brain potential that's associated with that, that we can actually detect and record in real time. And you talk about that rather sort of in an offhand way. That sounds, well, that's easy. Um, uh, but in fact, there's a lot going on in the brain. You're trying to, in amongst all of that noise that's going on, pick out a very precise, very small little signal. That's the big challenge. And so part of that challenge answer? is, is you know, we're recording the activity of billions of neurons, billions of cells are communicating electrically in your brain at any given moment. Um, so part of the challenge is to rule out and screen out the noise. Um, and the other part of the challenge is to have the individual focus their attention on intending that grasping movement. And the better their focus is, the easier it is for us to identify that in the brain signal. In the general development of this technology and the applications, where are you? Where are you on this path? The work that still needs to be done is really on creating what we call the closed loop environment. So that connection between the analysis of the signals and the action that you want to take, in this case, creating the electrical stimulation for a particular muscle movement. Our test pilot for this latest technology, Felton, is now wired up and ready to go. Remember, since his spinal cord injury, even the simple movement of opening and closing the palm of his hand has been nigh on impossible. Can you move your hand at all without the system? No, I can't. You can't. That's, that, so if I ask you to open your hand, that's it. That's all you get. Right. OK. OK. You ready? Yes. It's really 
really interesting. Um, is there a sense of like you've got to be in the zone? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, absolutely. If I can close my eyes, it may be better, but then I have to see the screen. Your brain is telling it to move. What's, what does that feel like after 15 years of that not happening? Wow. Well, the feeling is amazing. So now I can actually feel um, my fingers extending and I can feel the blood flow. And, you know, because I still have some sensation in my arms and in my hand. So, I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's pretty cool that it's going to help me open and close my hand. It's going to be um, beneficial grabbing maybe a can of soda or, you know, eating my food without a splint. You know, just using a direct fork or spoon. I mean, those are some of the things that, you know, some people may take for granted. It'll mean a lot to me one day to be able to do that. Bearing witness to science that really does have the ability to improve lives for people in the coming years still astounds me. There's still a long way to go, but then they've come a long way. So there's every reason to believe that scientists like the ones here at Miami, working with companies like ABM, will be able to bring hope and movement where once there was none.